According to the contemplative Catholic mystic and teacher Richard Rohr, the reason we don't know how to pray is that we usually pray from the first perspective, from those first things that come to mind, or what he calls first mind. The first mind, he says, sees everything through the lens of its own private needs and hurts, angers, and memories. In what is commonly called prayer for most of us, my hurts, needs, and perspectives are still the central reference point, only now, I've decided through prayer to invite a major power to help me with my already determined solution. We think prayer, and for that matter religion, is about God helping us get what we want, which is still a self-centered desire, instead of recognizing God's much better role, which is to help us know what we really desire deeper than our immediate desires, deeper even than the fears and hopes and dreams of our lives. There is an awareness within us, a deeper longing within us for something else, for spirit, for the divine presence, for a powerful love we sense moving in us and flowing through creation itself. The kingdom of heaven, Jesus said, is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid then in her joy, she goes out and sells all that she has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven or the beloved community of God is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. And on finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. Almost everything we desire and everything we worry about is either out of our ultimate control, or is going to pass away, or both. There's only one thing that lasts, only one thing we really need, only one treasure that ultimately matters because it shines through everything that matters. Let anyone with ears to hear, listen. Let me tell you something very important, writes Richard Rohr. The word prayer, is a code word for an entirely different way of processing life. When you pray, you're supposed to take off one thinking cap and put on another one that will move you from an egocentric perspective to a soul-centric perspective. In the first perspective, the calculating mind is what he calls it. In the second perspective, he calls the contemplative mind. And these are two entirely different types of software, he says. And since the calculating mind is almost always in control, you have to be carefully taught how to pray. But if you don't learn how to pray and renew your mind by a spiritual revolution, as it says in Ephesians, you will try to process life, love, death, suffering, God, and infinity with utterly inadequate software. <laughs> and it won't get you very far. It is work to learn how to pray, he says. The work of emptying the mind and filling the heart. In short, prayer isn't about changing God or God's mind, but being willing to let God change us. It is work to learn how to pray. The work of emptying the mind and filling the heart. Prayer isn't about changing God. Prayer and faith are about being open enough to let God change us, to let God change us from egocentric people to soul-centric people who are in touch with that treasure buried right here in our midst, right here deep in our own hearts and lives. And like Richard Moore says, this is not an easy process. In fact, it is a lifelong process. Learning to pray, learning to listen deeply to our hearts, learning to be open to that powerful love at the center of everything. Meanwhile, walking this path doesn't mean you won't still think about casseroles, Nutribullets and iPhones, or that you won't still wake up in the night worrying about work or your loved ones. It just means that over time you will experience a shift in perspective, a change in your priorities, and a growing awareness of the power of God's love at work in you and in the world. You will become like someone who took a mustard seed, the smallest of all the seeds, and sowed it in a field only to find that when it grows, it becomes a great tree and a home for many living things. You will become like a woman who took a little yeast 
and mix it in with just a few measures of flour, but the yeast grew until all of the flour was leavened and became bread to feed the hungry. Sisters and brothers, we live in a time when everything feels like it's being cheapened. Real news is fake, and fake news is reality. <laughs> Bullying is in, and compromise is out. Being a good consumer is promoted more than being a good citizen. Having stuff means more than being stuff. Neighborliness depends on which neighbor you're talking about. The earth seems to belong to the highest bidder instead of the Lord. 